The local government is a special arm of government, that arm that relates directly to the people at the community level to realize the policies of the state government. And now, the financial autonomy of the local governments in Nigeria is for the taking by them, going by the Supreme Court judgment, granting the same to the 774 local governments in the country. That's our focus on Special Report. The Supreme Court has indeed ruled that the federal government should henceforth pay all allocations directly to local government councils from the Federation account. Delivering judgment in the suit instituted by the Attorney General of the Federation, a seven-member panel of justices held that state governments have continued to abuse their powers by retaining and using the funds meant for local government areas. The Apex Court also ordered the federal government to withhold allocations to local governments covered by unelected officials appointed by the governor. Justice Emmanuel Agim, who read the lead judgment, said states are mandated to ensure that their local government councils are democratically elected and that governors cannot use their powers to dissolve democratically elected local government councils. And the long-awaited judgment on who should handle the allocations for local government areas came and the parties involved in the suit gathered at the Supreme Court for the verdict. The suit was instituted by the Attorney General of the Federation in May this year against governors of the 36 states asking for full autonomy for the country's 774 local governments. In the suit, the Attorney General of the Federation also requested the Supreme Court to authorize the direct transfer of funds from the Federation account to local governments under the Constitution. Delivering judgment, Justice Emmanuel Agim ruled that it is illegal and unconstitutional for governors to continue to receive and seize funds allocated to local governments in their states. The Apex Court held that no State House of Assembly has the power to make laws that could, in any manner, interfere with monies meant for the local government areas. It further declared unconstitutional the appointment of caretaker committees by governors to run the affairs of the local governments. It also held that the 36 states are under obligation to ensure democratic governance of the third tier of government. The Apex Court also made an order that henceforth no state government should be paid money standing to the credit of the local government councils. They further ordered immediate enforcement and compliance with these orders by the state governments and successive governments. Oh, well, um, first of all, as far as I'm concerned, there's no winner, there's no loser. Um, the Nigerian people will enjoy the benefits of good governance. Uh, I think this has been in the clamor for a long time. It's not personal. What is important is that the people, the people, the people we hold chairmen now more accountable because the funds are going directly to them. And I think that it is time for us to move this discussion forward. The judgment on local government autonomy have just been delivered by the Supreme Court. We will uh, get the certified true copy of the judgment as a body. The body of uh, State Attorneys General of the Federation will study it and then we'll come up with our statement on it. And with the local governments in view, residents of Delta State stepped out to elect the choice candidates for the position of local council chairman and councillors. The election, which held in 5,863 polling units and 500 wards across the 25 local government areas in Delta State, was described as credible, free and fair, in spite of the heavy downpour in the early hours of the day. The governor cast his vote in Ward 6, Unit 33, also the area of the Okwe local government, expressing confidence in the victory of the PDP. He reacted to the Supreme Court judgment on the financial autonomy for the local governments, insisting the recent development did not change anything in the state. I came through that same process of free and fair election. And with all the opposition, I won with very high margin. So I am assuring Delta that this election is free and fair. I've been up since monitoring the process, and now I'm here to cast my vote. 
I've casted my vote. I will show I will be victim for PDP by the grace of God. Right. Then on the issue of the judgment, Supreme Court giving judgment. But you can see that we believe in that same process. That's why when I came in, I did not constitute a transition committee. Not here in Delta State. I'm not in support of transition committee. And the HPM are the one handling the place and they were given three months and they said enable us to do election. And today, by the grace of God, we are doing our election today. By early next week, those won will be sworn in. So on the issue of the, the, the Supreme Court judgment, it doesn't it not affect the state because Delta State will don't temper with local government money. As we speak, the money for the past three months is still there. So without the judgment, Supreme Court say they should have autonomy. I am I believe in financial autonomy. As a former speaker, we are in the front front of the issue of financial autonomy for the legislature and for the judiciary. So, those uh, judgments now affect the state. Polling units in Osubi area, in Okwe local government area, some early voters arrived to cast their ballots, including the chairmanship candidate of the PDP. Thank God you are here witnessing the election process. You can see a conversation going on and people voting without complaint, without fight, without threatening. Every year is peaceful. Everybody has come out en masse to vote PDP for the elections. We PDP we campaign for the elections. And all the people here, if there is anything that is wrong, that we do not campaign and see other parties like APC, LGP and the rest, we will see all their agents here. But you can see that they themselves, they know that we campaign. And they are not here to make any trouble. Every year is peaceful. Like I said, people are voting to make sure I emerge as a winner because we can play around all the words in the world. That is the people's While the governor of Delta State thereafter urged the newly elected chairman and vice chairman of the 25 local governments in the just concluded elections in the state to embark on viable infrastructural projects to impact positively on the lives of people at the grassroots. He tasked them to avoid profligacy, typified by wasteful spending and extravagant lifestyles, but rather address the recurring problems of insecurity, poverty, unemployment, and environmental decay in the various local government areas. The governor was speaking during the swearing-in ceremony of the newly elected chairman and vice chairman in Asaba, the state capital. He underscored the importance of chairmen staying very close to the people by operating from their area headquarters and warned that they must shun unhealthy practices of running the local governments from offshore, especially Asaba, and worry. He reiterated that the state government does not tamper with local government funds. Governor Sharif says the Supreme Court ruling on local government financial autonomy is a welcome development. After taking their oath of office, the chairman of Oshimili North Local Government Council, who responded on behalf of his colleagues, expressed appreciation to the governor and leaders of the PDP in the state for the opportunity given to them to serve at the grassroots level of governance. This Excellency, the Right Honorable Elder Sheriff Francis Oropwedo Oboewori, Governor of Delta State. Please take note that strategic communication for the last three months are in tax. I therefore expect you to hit the ground running by embarking on visible infrastructure projects that can be commissioned. Don't think that because the money is there, you just go there and do the usual way. 
It's not going to be possible. So you must make sure this money are put in use. They put in use. Let your organization be characterized by modesty, physical discipline, prudent management, judicial allocation of resources, and excellent project delivery. As Speaker of the National Assembly, we advocated for financial autonomy for the legislature and judiciary. The House also voted yes to local government autonomy during the fifth alteration of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Welcome development. Actually, Delta State has never tempered local government funds. Rather, the state government has often had to augment the allocation to the local government councils to enable them meet their financial obligations. You know, this is a huge body. This body they have been taken away from us. So, we are very happy, very, very happy. Very, very happy. Aside from the allocation, I expect you to improve on your internal generated revenue and ensure it forms a sizable chunk of your revenue. However, I will caution you that the need to boost your IGR will be carefully balanced with the needs and expectations of our people. Your Excellency, on behalf of the 25 Council Chairmen, my colleagues, they asked me to thank you, to say a very big thank you to you for finding us worthy. And they also told me to assure you and tell you that we have adopted the more agenda across the 25 local governments. I want to assure you, Excellency, that this chairman will listen and respect our leaders, will be loyal to our party, the PDP, and above all, Your Excellency, will be loyal to you because you are our boss. We will ensure that the more agenda we hit every nook and cranny of the 25 local government of Delta State. So who much is given, so much is expected. You are giving us more and expect more from us. Thank you, Excellency. God bless you. The Governor of Oyo State, Jay Mackinde, who has created two committees to review the Supreme Court judgment on financial autonomy of the local governments and come up with recommendations that will ensure it has no negative impact, reacted to the ruling. We all swore, I swore, to uphold the Constitution. But the law is the law. If the law says, uh, uh, if the law is in conflict, it behoves on us to uh, look for our own homegrown solution that uh, will ensure that we have transparency, we can operate. So we will be outlining the major uh, uh, challenges we have at the local government level so we can develop our own uh, solution, like I said. Uh, uh, I mean, the challenges, uh, uh, if addressed, will ensure that we have seamless uh, implementation, you know, uh, of the process that can allow your state to continue uh, to run harmoniously. So we are responsible uh, uh, administration in your state. We don't need the federal government to tell us uh, uh, what to do. We know what to do, and we know what is good for our people. Or your state will get out of this uh, even stronger. We are people that uh, uh, we know what is good for our people. We can run our own affairs. The federal government is not superior constitutionally to the state government. <clears throat> well, they have more resources than the state, but they are, the jurisdiction is coordinate. The national president of the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Argon, Aminu Fata, has assured that the local government chairman will comply with the judgment of the Supreme Court. He gave the assurance at a press briefing in Lafia, the Nasarawa state capital. 
He also appreciated the federal government and added that all the chairmen will repose the confidence of the masses by delivering dividends of democracy at the grassroots. We are going to abide by these decisions. As if we can recall, the chairman of the governor's firm, being our principal, had clearly came out with their position that they will also abide by the decisions of the Supreme Court. So we are happy for that position and uh, we will uh, follow up. And we, uh, we have keyed in because those decisions are overwhelmingly accepted by the generality of Nigerians. If the Nigerians, the people we are representing at the grassroots have agreed overwhelmingly and happy with this ruling, so definitely being their representatives or being those holding mandates on their behalf, we are going to respect that, uh, those decisions and we make sure that those dishes, uh, decisions are being uh, religiously followed as they concern local government councils chairman across the country. And the Nasarawa State House of Assembly welcomed the Supreme Court judgment granting autonomy to the local government. During a sitting, the Speaker, Honorable Daniel Digital, says the House aligns with the judgments of the Apex Court. We are telling the world that uh, we are also align ourselves. That's why State House of Assembly align ourselves with the, the Supreme Court judgment, granting financial autonomy to local government. That's the 77 local government that we have in the state. We align ourselves with this judgment and we congratulate the 774 local government that we have in this world, in this uh, Nigeria. And we also congratulate all the local government chairmen that have gotten this financial autonomy. And it is our hope and belief that they will do the needful so that we, they are not relieved. So on this note, we really appreciate His Excellency, the President of this Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, uh, for the bold step they have taken and the Attorney General of the Federation for this bold step he has taken and uh, by the grace of God I strongly believe that it's a very big relief to local government administration and such burden has been on unnecessary burden that we have been witnessing will no longer be there so we thank God we thank uh, the Supreme Court and it is my hope and belief that this judgment will be followed as expected, will be obeyed as expected. And following the Supreme Court judgment affirming financial autonomy and independence of the 774 local governments in Nigeria, members of the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees in Imo State have lauded President Bola Tinimbu and the Supreme Court for backing the independence of the local governments in Nigeria. The members of the union disclosed this during a solidarity rally organized in Owiri, the Imo state capital. The union members carried placards with various inscriptions saying financial autonomy and independence of the local governments will no doubt enhance and ensure a better welfare for local government workers and by extension develop the rural areas in the country. Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees, especially all of us at the Imo State Chapter, that we are solidly behind the President and the Supreme Court for liberating the local government councils from the strongholds of the higher tiers of government. We want to salute his political will to change the experiment that we have experienced over the years by going to the Supreme Court to seek the interpretation of what we have just benefited today. In the past, successive presidents have gone to the National Assembly trying to amend constitution to ascertain the position of local government in the country. But for him, 
He is aware that local government is the top tier of government in this country. But in the past, local government has been subservient, not even subordinate, to the higher tiers of government. And the Supreme Court had just done justice to that. We salute all the judges in the Supreme Court yes. for taking the bull by the horn. Today, the local government have been liberated. We only want to thank the executive governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzadimma, and the chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum for immediately accepting the decision of the Supreme Court. With honorable members of the State House of Assembly. Meanwhile, giving some figures, Casino State Governor Malam Diko Rada announced that from June 2023 to June 2024, Casino State had received the sum of 130.1 billion naira federal allocation for the local government and spent the sum of 66 billion naira on salaries. The governor, who was reacting to the recent Supreme Court judgment on local government autonomy, which focused on local government funds, explained, out of the figure, a total of 10.1 billion naira was spent on pensions and gratuities and 12.13 billion naira on security. According to the governor, the sum of 376.6 million naira was also spent on security requests from various local governments, 4 billion naira on direct running of local government councils, 15.1 billion naira for various projects carried out by the local governments themselves, 360 million for school infrastructural material, 1.56 billion naira for foreign and local scholarships, and 933.8 million naira for Hajj operations. He added that local governments expended 6.14 billion naira on food palliatives, with an additional 3.1 billion naira on palliatives care for staff and other stakeholders on the Sala package, which was paid directly to the local government and local government area workers. 3.84 billion naira was used to purchase fertilizers and 1.19 billion naira on agrochemicals for agriculture. The governor, in a joint meeting with members of the State Executive Council and members of the Katsina State House of Assembly, held at the Council Chamber of the General Muhammadu Buhari Government House, Katsina, says the meeting was aimed at addressing the people of Katsina on the recent Supreme Court judgment on local government autonomy and the stance of the Katsina State Government. The Supreme Court judgment has jettisoned a constitutional provision for a state and local government joint account on the basis of the state governors abuse the process. I will respectfully say that some of us try our best to manage our joint funds in collective approach. We are facing various socioeconomic challenges coupled with insecurity in our frontline local governments. When I took office in 2023, about 23 to 24 local governments were ravaged by insecurity. Our concerted efforts have reduced the insecurity to the fringes of the frontline local governments. Of great concern is how some critical engagement for the local government council will be affected. The salaries of teachers under SUBEP, salaries of local government workers, pension and gratitude to local government staff, primary health care facilities deductions for the Emirate councils. Most importantly, contribution towards security must also be addressed. Meanwhile, legal luminary G.T. Ogunye speaks on the implications to federalism of the Supreme Court judgment granting financial autonomy to the local governments in Nigeria. It's democratization of corruption. Because, you know, yes, it's what it is. It's what it is. It's what it is. And indeed, ICPC and EFC will now have more job to do. They will not be running across the country because I'm telling you, they will have to be monitoring how these people will all receive their allocation. You know, the CBN said that, you know, or some people have said that immediately the state government received the allocation, there's reverberation in the forest market because they take money there and then start converting to dollars. That allegation is on the ground. So, what will happen at the level of the local government? What will happen? at the level of the local government, when such money is received, would they take money from there and come to our cities and start buying property, building hotels in our cities, Abuja, Lagos, Port Harcourt, Enugu, Kano, 
a Kaduna, and so on and so forth. So we will see uh, what will happen. Whether the ordinary people that unfortunately have joined the celebration that, oh, they are now going to receive the dividends democracy. of democracy at the grassroots level, who will receive it by the stroke of this uh, uh, judgment. I, I don't think so. Yeah. The die is now cast for a cohesive working relationship with the state government, devoid of bureaucracy, towards realized state objectives for development. For Special Report, I'm Alumide Macaulay. Thank you for watching.